Martin. Um, uh, I'm Syed Chihabula. I work at General Motors, uh, focusing, and my focus area is mostly in diagnostic and software architecture. Um, I'm also leading the SOVD work group at um, AutoZar uh, site. So today uh, I'd like to give you an overview on the service-oriented vehicle diagnostic architecture development work. Um, so uh, today uh, we'll, we're going to cover a couple of items. Uh, first, uh, an overview of the concept itself, why uh, you know this concept was introduced and what type of features and functions uh, this concept supports. And then we'll kind of look into um, the development work that's ongoing at AutoZar side uh, to comprehend the SOVD concept. And we'll wrap up at the end uh, uh, to kind of give you a user perspective on SOVD overall. What are the future challenges? Um, what needs to be done and things like that. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask at the end. So um, service, Today, in today's world, most of the, um, the significant number of the uh, uh, automotive ECUs are based on uh, classic autos are, uh, and some, a few are moving into adaptive autos are, but when it comes to diagnosing uh, these controllers, uh, we heavily rely on the Unified Diagnostic Services or UDS protocol. Um, so this, UDS protocol uh, takes diagnostic from an ECU-centric approach. Uh, so basically, we can uh, read a physical or different type of functional fault uh, from a controller. We can read uh, certain software parameters or memory uh, to understand what's going on with the vehicle. Uh, we can securely unlock a controller, um, lock it back so that you know uh, we meet the cybersecurity requirements. Uh, we can also run several um, routine controls, I.O. functions uh, to support end of line uh, needs. Um, and obviously we, we can download, uh, upload software calibrations today. So that has worked um, quite well uh, uh, up until now uh, for most use cases. However, as we are uh, moving into more complex uh, uh, applications like autonomous vehicles, we introduce a new breed of controllers. We're calling them HPCs or high performance computers. So these high HPCs, they support multi-core, multi-threaded computing capability. So within one controller, you may have multiple processes and applications running. So uh, imagine like you have a big ECU uh, within which you have a radio application, you have a cluster application, uh, you may have an active safety ECU where you have all the radars, lidars uh, kind of running in parallel. Uh, so pretty uh, bandwidth comprehensive, it requires a lot of processing powers. And before, we, we kind of concentrated features and functions in ECUs, but now these features and functions, they're distributed across multiple virtual applications. So it's kind of like a system within a system and we, they can run at, as part of the same process. So it's no longer necessarily tied to a particular box, but it's distributed. So as these new software processes uh, are running in parallel, we we now apart from the you know current uh, physical or functional faults we also need to monitor log the software processes and and have diagnostic capabilities just not it's no longer limited to electronics or uh, io diagnostic it's it's more complicated um like for example if your spotify in your vehicle or google map crashes, then you might want to know what's going on with that vehicle so you can fix it. And then the, the most key part of it is like we have systems and subsystems now that requires rapid updates. So back in the days when you uh, had a recall or a new feature, you, you, you could, you know, you bring the customer back to the dealership and have them update the software, or you could do an over the air update. But now, but it kind of followed like a waterfall approach in general. When you're launching a vehicle, it comes with all features and functions. But now the, the approach in the automotive industry is that 
it is an ongoing process. So uh, you get a vehicle with certain list of features and functions, and later on you may want to subscribe, say Netflix or other type of features. So we need the capability to rapidly update certain features, functions, subsystems, so that we can add value uh, to the customer in increment. So these challenges, these kind of uh, the the kind of pose the demand for a new technology, which is not possible within the current UDS protocol, we need to go beyond that. Um, so that's where um, the the concept of uh, service-oriented vehicle diagnostic or SOVD came about. So as you can see in the uh, left side picture, we will continue to have these cloud-based remote test clients like telematics modules or cloud computers. We will have service technicians who will be uh, right next to the vehicle and, and trying to uh, access information uh, uh, so that they can repair the vehicle better. So those are not going away, but now that we have these um, high processing computers, we are introducing a service-based communication between the uh, proximity, like the, the nearby test client and the remote client. So instead of sending a UDS request, via 4G or via you know, the DLC connector, you can send um, a service-oriented communication like uh, REST API. So you can say like, okay, get me all the software version on the vehicle. So instead of sending like multiple requests or sending a functional request, it kind of aggregates the information and provides you with that information. So that's a paradigm shift uh, there. And then um, because the uh, the existing UDS functionalities, those are important, those are not going away. So SOVD still retains those uh, features that I spoke about in the earlier slide. Uh, so we are still capable of reading the faults, uh, accessing the data from the vehicle and from different controllers. Uh, we are still able to program these ECUs. But the new thing here is um, the HPCs would now, may now, uh, serve as a centralized diagnostic access point. So instead of asking every controller right here, or you know there might be multiple HPC, you can just ask one entity and it can provide you an assessment, a vehicle level health assessment from one single point, which is uh, pretty um, exciting for considering some use cases. And it, uh, the other key feature of SOVD is that we do acknowledge that these classic autos are based ECs. They're not going away in the foreseeable future. We'll still continue to have them. So there needs a translation mechanism between these REST API based uh, requests to the you know, classic autos are based like UDS request. So we are uh, attempting, as OVD concept allows us to develop and standardize this uh, classic uh, adapter that translates the uh, restless uh, or uh, stateless communication like the RESTful APIs to UDS requests. And lastly, um, uh, what is uh, the most important, I think, in uh, considering uh, the, uh, the use cases of HPC, it does allow us to make context-based uh, diagnostic access. So what do I mean by context-based? Uh, so in, in the, as I was explaining earlier, in the traditional way, we access ECU information. I want to know engine controller faults. So I ask engine controller, hey, tell me your faults. But now SOVD introduces the concept of entity where it's no longer ECU-centric, but you can define uh, a domain, let's say body, I want to know what is going on with the body domain or the infotainment domain. I want to do a complete health check. What is going on with uh, infotainment or active safety? SOVD does allow us to access that domain specific information. Even it goes beyond, you can define certain features that I want to understand the health of this certain feature. So that is also comprehended within the uh, SOVD concept. Um, 
So at a high level, again, there are uh, tons and tons of use cases that uh, the SOVD work group at a, a, a some side uh, develop. I'm not going to cover those. I'm only covering those that, that are interesting for most people, I guess. But it, it goes a, a lot of different areas and considers specific use cases uh, where we are struggling today. So now, as far as the, uh, the development at AutoZar is concerned, uh, we introduced a concept 704 um, last year in 2020 to kind of take this concept, this ideology uh, developed by um, AISAM and kind of comprehend them within the AutoZar uh, framework. So the work group, even though the concept was introduced, it took us about a year to kick off the uh, SOVD work group uh, this year in July, 2021. So, so far we have participation from multiple OEMs like General Motors, Daimler, and so on, and also different tier one and tier two suppliers uh, who are meeting on bi-weekly basis. And we're discussing basically, uh, you know, different requirements, different use cases, and how to translate these uh, concept into the AutoZar uh, world. Um, we are also collaborating closely with the ISAM uh, peers to make sure the essence of the requirement is properly captured. Now, uh, as far as timeline for release is concerned, um, uh, the draft requirement as per the initial plan is planned for the AutoZar uh, release 2211, which is scheduled in November of 2022, whereas uh, the final version is gonna come out in uh, 23, 2023 in uh, release 2311. Now, we are in a bit of uh, time crunch because um, you know, our uh, first gate reviews are scheduled for the first quarter of 2022. So again, we probably will revise these release timeframe uh, to make sure um, you know, uh, all the development work is properly planned for. Um, so that's what's going on as far as scheduling and release plan is concerned. Now, moving on to uh, some of the key challenges and focuses that we are uh, um, looking at in AutoZar side. So as far as development platform is concerned, we selected Adaptive AutoZar uh, to be the platform. Uh, there are a couple of reasons. Most of the HPC-like ECUs are already adopting uh, Adaptive AutoZar uh, for a couple of reasons, because it, it does allow you to um, uh, allocate dynamic memory. Uh, it does allow you to uh, support service-oriented communication. So that from those perspectives, the Adaptive AutoZar is pretty um, attractive uh, platform to uh, implement the SOVD concept. Um, currently, we're focusing on the use cases developed by the ASAM work group. And basically the goal is to map the needed functionality uh, to the existing capabilities available in the uh, diagnostic manager of AutoZar framework. Uh, obviously, because ASAM kind of went beyond uh, the existing capability, we will definitely have more opportunities of uh, development and we will be introducing um, uh, the new features and function within the diagnostic manager, but there's more to come. Um, one of the key challenge um, uh, is that how do you translate these functional requirements uh, laid out by ASM forum and, and kind of come up with an implementable uh, requirement within the Adazar uh, design constraint? Uh, I'll try to give a quick example. Um, is that uh, one of the concepts uh, within ASAM is entity. So an entity, as you can see in the picture, an entity could be a, an app. It could be a feature. It could be even a domain or even an ECU. Uh, so comparing to today's concept of identifying an ECU, we usually go with a diagnostic address. We basically say ECU A will diagnostic have an diagnostic address A, and that's we how we identify. We never went beyond the ECU, uh, uh, you know, uh, definition. Now the challenge that was imposed on us, like a lot, we have to have the ability to update only, let's say, the navigation app or we need to only update the door ECU or even certain feature. Like I want to update, you know, 
um, adaptive cruise feature only. I don't want to update the rest of the uh, the features and function and software within the ECU, which from a concept perspective, it makes total sense, right? Because it saves time, it saves the complexities involved with the overall ECU update. You're only providing partial update, which also because of market demand. So, but then comprehending it again, changing the mindset, changing the way we define uh, entities, that's, um, that's something we are uh, focusing on figuring out. The other thing is finding the dependencies with other functional clusters. Um, so as you can see, this is the uh, standard uh, adaptive AutoZar framework. So uh, the SOVD function as per the current plan is gonna reside within the ARA Diag or uh, Diagnostic Manager component, but there are a lot of dependencies uh, with other functional clusters, like how you synchronize time when it comes to logging the data. Um, how are you gonna save the data into persistency? Because we no longer have like static memory, it's dynamic memory allocation. How do you monitor certain health channels like I want to monitor how my certain how a certain feature is working so those dependencies we are trying to identify and figure out how that affects the development work or APIs or functions in those functional clusters um, then the one of the major thing we are trying to standardize is that definition of classic adaptive autos are that allows us to translate these um, restful APIs to UDS requests so that's another big area of focus. And above all, one of the key thing is ensuring backward compatibility. From an OEM perspective, you may want to put your uh, model year 23 software in a model year 22 vehicle because it, it provides the additional value to the customer. So if we come up with something that breaks that backward compatibility, it will be challenging for many OEMs and tier ones alike. So that's an area we are also looking into and making sure that we don't break those uh, backward compatibility. Now, uh, moving on, uh, the last slide. Um, so from a user perspective, so in general, an industry standard solution like SOVD, we needed it yesterday because we have these autonomous programs coming out. We have um, a more complex feature, subscription-based functions that are getting introduced. It's a heavily uh, competitive market. So everyone wants to get out something. So really we needed something a lot ahead so that we could actually uh, introduce these in the market today um, but regardless we are working on it so that's a great thing but then because the existing programs are already planned to be launched with these large computing platforms the a lot of OEMs and suppliers are likely producing their own so unique solution, which is not industry standard. And, and yes, we need some time to actually formalize the SOVD concept within ISO, within AutoZar, and make sure uh, there is an available solution for the customer. There, there might be some discrepancy where you already have a unique solution, very OEM specific, but there's the industry standard solution already out there. So the future challenge that I foresee is aligning the industry um, with the SOVD platform and, and provide these um, attractive opportunities that uh, provides incremental value uh, to the OEMs, to the tier ones and customers alike. So that's something we really need to focus on uh, advertising why SOVD is a better solution uh, compared to other unique solution that may or may not exist in the market. So another key challenge um, is uh, the, the concept of SOVD. It's not only a technological uh, a change, uh, we are actually introducing uh, a change in mindset, a, a change in culture. Why is that? If you go to like today, any repair shop, there are dealership repairs that uses their own tools chain, mostly based on UDS. You have these mom and pop shops, smaller repair shops that buy generic scan tools um, uh, that to access vehicle uh, uh, trouble code information, certain data to, for repair purpose. So when we introduce this SFED, we need a significant update in the tool chain uh, to allow us to support these additional functionalities 
to uh, to support better repair for these HPC type of controllers. So that needs to happen. Um, our cloud capability, again, we, we are talking about uh, updating huge amount of data. So that needs to be revisited. And then OEM and supplier alignment is also a, a, a great challenge uh, because making sure that everyone has a, a solution available and they're coming in line and implementing it and the right tools are available. And also the functional lane alignment. The, if you look into the service organization, the manufacturing, they're quite used to the current way of doing diagnostic using UDS. So how do we shift that mindset? So that's another challenge. At the end of the day, it will become a, 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 you know, a cost versus benefit uh, assessment by everyone how to, to decide whether we adopt SOVD or not. And that's where we need to play a key role to, uh, to, uh, to establish that case that yes, SOVD is better and it does meet the growing need of you know uh diagnostic in the in the future uh so uh that was it uh from my side um so uh if you have any questions you can ask now or uh, send me an email we are constantly looking for new participation uh in the um uh, work groups so uh please uh, feel free to uh, uh let me know and i can send an invite Said, thank you very much uh, for your perspective there. 